Hi friends, my name is Sharif and today I am going to tell you how many programming languages that I know as in 2021. Let's go! So anyway, for today's video, I'll be talking in English because I want to practice my English and I just want to have fun talking English. So basically, this video will be, I'll be explaining my complete timeline, how many languages that I know and also going to tell you how many languages that you should learn, okay? You might wonder like, like how many that you should learn before you're going to go pro, right? And also don't forget to share what language that you know currently down in the comment below because I would like to know, all right? Okay, so let's first start all the way back to 2017, which is the year that I started learning programming languages. So the first, very first language that I learned is Python. Now, the reason why I pick Python is because uh, of a competition that I entered in my college. Now, during that time, there's a programming competition. Basically, we are going to solve problems using programming languages. And the reason why I picked Python is because that competition had this module which teaches Python. So I picked that module and learned. But I didn't actually like focus that competition too much because it's kind of like optional. So I just, you know, entered, but I don't really, you know, um, try hard to win. So I did try to learn Python at that time and I did pretty bad. I remember I stuck on for loops because I cannot get you know the concept into my head so I, I gave up until for loop so a lot more concept after that is basically I don't learn anything and then I did bad I basically lose of course because I don't even know any programming languages other than Python but then I don't really learn anything else after that because during that time during college I don't actually have a code science subject um, I'm studying A levels for you know physics chemistry and mathematics 2018, I don't learn anything because I'm focusing on my A-levels. Okay, now the year 2019, after A-levels, before I'm going to university, I decided to pick up Python because I feel like I need to finish learning Python because I don't like stop halfway. So I decided to, you know, find a resources, a website to teach me how to code in Python. The other reason why I decided to, you know, pick up Python is because, you know, I'm going to enter a degree, right? A university in the UK and it's a computer science degree, which is a very hard degree, which I believe at that time, very hard at that time, not now, not time I think that computer science is okay. I thought all the students that are going to the degree already know some programming languages. So I think that I don't want to be left out. So I decided to pick up Python programming languages, you know, just to get my basics right. So I decided to learn Python in a website called Code Academy. Now it is a paid website. So it's very, very expensive because it's a US based website. So I think for a month, I need to pay like 85 ringgit, which is very, very expensive. And trust me, it is a very good platform. And during that, I don't know a lot of resources that actually, the thing is, there's a lot, of, a lot of resources out there in the internet that is free and reliable. But on that time, I don't know at all. So um, it's kind of a bummer, but you know, the past is the past. September 2019, where I entered my first semester degree in the UK, in Edinburgh. So the first language on that first semester is actually Haskell. Now, you might never heard of Haskell, and trust me, I never heard it before, before I entered my first uh, semester. So Haskell is a different program languages. It's not the same as Python, Java, or C++, or C. It's a functional program languages. Now, the idea of functional program languages is basically a program languages that uses functions. Now, I won't go deep. You don't need to know Haskell because I don't think you're going to use it much. Uh, you're going to use it for a certain aspect of field. But that's the first uh, language that I learned on that semester. Next semester, which is 2020, uh, January to May, I learned one language, which is Java. Uh, the reason we use Java is to learn about the basis of imperative programming languages. So for those who don't know what is imperative programming languages are, it basically just for loops, function methods, class, uh, and you know, printing and all that kind of you know, basic stuff. And then we also learn object-oriented programming with Java. Okay, so now it's summer break. It's still 2020, which is somewhere between May and early September before going to my second year. I decided to, you know, I want to pick another languages. I want to, you know, expand my skills. So I learned a lot of web development languages such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then I learned SQL, which is a language for databases. And then I learned ExpressJS. Express is actually a framework for JavaScript. So for those who don't know what framework is, it's not a language. So if we can say that languages is like a building blocks, framework is like a component built from uh, the building blocks and we can use the components any way we want. So there's like a framework if I were to put it simply. And then I decided you know, to pick a mobile development framework because you know I don't know what to do at that time. I'm trying to explore what can I do with you know programming and stuff. And I decided to pick up Flutter framework. So I'm going to going to learn about Dart languages. So Dart is another programming languages. But basically on that time, I'm just trying to you know explore uh, 
a lot of uh, stuff that is in the computer science field. I don't really know what to do at that time. And then during my 2020, during my second year on my third semester, there are basically three languages that I learned on that time for that semester only. Now that's a lot. So I learned Python, uh, which is everyone know what Python is, and then I learned C, and then I learned, okay, this is one of the hardest languages, which is ASM, or we call it assembly, Wait, assembly programming language. So we know that actually programming languages have a certain level. We have high level programming languages like Python, JavaScript, and Java. And then we have a bit lower, which is a low level language um, like C. And then a bit lower, we have assembly. So the lower we get to a programming language, the harder it is for us to understand, but much more faster for a computer to compute. Okay, so the higher level language is almost the same as a human languages. The lower it is, it's almost the same as computer. So ASM or assembly program language is <laughs> it's very, very hard to understand. I mean, okay, to be honest, it's become easier and you get the idea on how to use it, but it's very, very hard to, you know, trying to get the idea into your head. But it was fun, you know, trying to compete with ASM. And don't worry, you won't be using ASM much in work. You are going to use ASM if you are developing developing a computer or an electronics because basically this is about computer and electronics. Now the reason why we have three different languages that we learned during that semester is because for data science we use Python and for computer systems we use C and ASM. Since C and ASM are low level languages, so that's why it will be um, suitable for computer systems since we are going to work with computers in a low-level environment. Alright, so this is basically on my third semester. A lot of language, but in my fourth semester, which is next year, 2021, January till May, I don't actually learn any new languages. I'm still using just Java and Python for the courses and module on that time, which is, you know, not really new. Alright, now it's 21, and this is currently summer break, which is right now, 21. I'm currently, uh, which is during my summer, I'm currently revising my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because I had some concept that I kind of like just passing through, so I decided to revise it back again. And I'm currently studying uh, React. So React is another framework, or I think it was a library for JavaScript. The reason why I want to learn this is because I am currently very, very interested with front-end development, um, precisely user interface, user design, and also accessibility, because I think that was fun. Okay, so that's basically it. That's all of the languages and technology that I learned throughout my life as in now 2021. Now you might wondering right now, okay, so this guy is learning a lot of languages. So how much should I learn to get good in programming? First thing first, if you are new to programming world, learn some basics first and then explore what kind of field that you want to be in the computer science field. During 2020, after my first year, I decided to explore what I want to do. Whether I want to do front end, back end, or do I want to do mobile development, or do I want to do data science? And after that, I decided, all right, I like to do front end. So this uh, summer break, I decided to revise my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and I decided to learn React. I don't want to learn any mobile development at the moment. I want to focus on all this technology first. Okay, so you got the idea? So don't try to learn all the languages is out there, like PHP or Node.js, or I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of language that I, I can't remember. Do you remember during 2020 that I said during my summer break, I learned Dart and Flutter? The thing is, I actually forgot about it right now. I don't remember how to use it. So I spent like, I think I spent a month trying to learn Dart and Flutter, but I don't use it at all. And now I forgot about it, which is kind of useless, right? Because you spend a lot of time and then you forget about it, okay? Don't be too pushy, chill, chill, je belajar ni. Jangan nak rush, rush. Belajar bila perlu. And every time you learn something new, uh, a certain languages, try to make a project out of it to make sure that the knowledge that you gain will in be intact in your memory. It's about, that's how basically all of people who in programming remember how to use it. Okay? So that's basically it. Hope you guys are now know how many languages that I know. Other than that, I don't know. But of course, you can always ask and I'll try to answer as much as possible. Any questions, feel free to drop down below. See you guys on the next one. Assalamualaikum and happy coding. Bye. Oh yeah, stay safe. Bye.